In this morning's Health Watch, the sleepiness gene. Are you always yawning even after what you think was a good night's sleep? New research says the explanation is in your genes. Let's talk about sleep and how you can get more of it with our Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Good morning. Good morning, Harry. Sleep is a big business in this country right now, all kinds of sleep clinics and stuff like this. So this is important new research. And right. what does it say? Well, this study came out of the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. And they, it was a small study. They looked at about 130 people. But particularly, they were looking at the genes gene variant known as DQB, it has a longer name, but mm -hmm. DQB is the abbreviation, and they really found that those who had this gene right. slept less soundly, had less deep sleep, huh. less REM sleep, right. and were more fatigued when this, given the same amount of sleep as people who didn't have the gene. So if you've ever met someone who mm -hmm. can function on four hours of sure, sleep and sure. you need eight to feel right. as awake, mm -hmm. you might be having this gene variant and uh -huh. they probably don't. So if you find out you have that gene, what can you do to counter it? Well, it affects, first of all, estimated about 25% of the population. So huh. one in four of this wow. of us could have this gene and that therefore not feel as good during the day. Mm -hmm. But look, we have we've spoke about it here before. Getting restful sleep is really, really important. Right now, all the researchers are saying is that if you think you have this variant, add a little caffeine to your day to help kind of pick you up right. and boost. But again, you want to have good sleep habits because this shows you that you really need more sleep right. than the person who does not have this variant. Uh, just to, I want to pause in the middle of this a second because you really believe that sleep along with diet and exercise, if you really want to take care of yourself, you want to make sure you get a good night's sleep. That's correct, Harry, and it requires the same discipline as good attention to diet and exercise, and I really think it is on par with those two mm -hmm. lifestyle factors. All right, so there are some things that people, we do every day that ruin another, what would could be an otherwise good night's right. sleep. These are the things to not do. To not do. So nightcaps, drinking alcohol within about three hours of bedtime. It might initially make you feel more drowsy, but it will disrupt the quality of your sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, sleeping in bed with your pets. A lot of people do this, Harry. They think it's cute. They, they cuddle up with them. Mm -hmm. Pets do not have the same bedtime or sleep ah. cycles that we do. When the pets get up, it can wake you up. And lastly, you might feel exhausted, but that's different from feeling sleepy. Ah. If you come home from work, try not to go directly to sleep because you might find your Yourself awake mm -hmm. two hours later. Yeah, to do the crossword for a while before it, that That's happens. Right. That's very helpful. Uh, not uncommon to have a sleepless night from time to time. Right. When should you really start to pay attention and say, this is more than just an aberration? Well, very, very important to recognize if your sleep problem persists over a period of time and or it interferes with what you are able to do during the day, you really want to talk to your doctor. It could be due to medication. It could be due to depression. It could be due to heart disease. Mm. Frequently, people with heart disease disease will awaken during the night and have right, to sit up, right, yeah. dangle their feet over the edge of the bed. You want to see right. your doctor about those. It could be a sign of something else. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, as always, thank you very you much. Bet.